It's one of the smallest and most discreet 4K cameras ever designed from a company which has built good reputation for its capable and budget-friendly action cameras. Today, we inspect the Akaso Keychain, the smallest 4K vlog cam on the go. Welcome, tech for channel, I'm Michael and inspecting cool tech together with you is what I usually do here. I got this unit shipped by Akasa before they launched their Indiegogo campaign and I guess their intention was to put the video on the crowdfunding page, although my gut tells me right now that it might never happen because of some things I'm gonna say in the next minutes. But it is interesting to see if Akasa would prioritize honest opinions of users over people praising their camera because they got it for a review. Cause in short term, praising is great, brings more sales. But if we think about long term performance, setting too high and wrong expectations about something easily leads to huge disappointment in brand and pretty sure that Indiegogo community can be very vocal. So the keychain camera by Akaso is priced at $109, which considering its specs, performance, accessories and so on, is a rather bad deal. And I can't believe it will sell well at $169 as Akaso claimed from the listing. The other weird part is that it's not small enough to really be a keychain camera, unless you want your pockets to be attractive to certain audiences. We can try comparing it to the GoPro, but image quality wise, I'd better say nothing. We can think about putting it on a drone, but the form factor is totally not suitable. So it seems to be a good fit for t-shirts, if you want to be the weirdo in the room wearing the crazy new tech gadget, or I don't know, if you can see some good use cases for this form factor, especially such that regular action cams can't be used for, please let me know in the comments. The only reasonable competition I can point to is the Insta360's Go model, which belongs to the group of devices where you can say thank you but no thank you. Unboxing, and this is the part that Akaso have done right. Much smaller box than their usual size for action cams because there are less accessories. If you're curious about some of the other Akaso models, make sure to check the links in the description because I've tested a lot of them. Inside the pack, we get these three main accessories, the plastic stand, which in fact broke and you're going to see that in a minute, with options to be adjusted in any direction and also having quarter-inch threaded mount, then we have the magnet-based clamp and then the rubber case. Charging cable and instructions are also attached, make sure to read very carefully because I got a few of the things wrong, took me a while to get used to the navigation, if you plan to shoot with it occasionally, better keep at least the app around so that you can read the user manual. It has LEDs and two buttons on the side, and lens on the front, which is surrounded by these extra LEDs which will illuminate objects at night. I've done my homework with the technical specs and got all the details for you, camera geeks. Some plus chipset inside, Sony IMX258, it's a 13 megapixel image sensor, wide angle 6P glass with no distortions, 60 minute battery life, a Wi-Fi module and all that packed within only 36 grams of weight. The image sensor is mediocre, you will notice noise in most videos and low light performance is not that good. The same sensor is being used for many other action cams and certain smartphone models from 3 to 4 years ago. Processor on the other side is just fine for the supported video recording resolutions. It's supposed to be a true 4K action cam, which at this size is a good thing, and I guess the castle's major focus here is to be the Insta360 GO, which was released a year ago. So at least that goal was accomplished. Vlogging. They point to that as being one of the main strengths of the Akasu 4K keychain. And here we are, real life test outdoors. A little bit of sunshine. Um, the, the weather is rather fine. There is no wind. And this is the quality of the internal microphone because I'm recording with it right now. So let me know how you find the qualities of this action camera as, as a vlogging setup. No selfie screen, not even a main screen, so I can't really see anything at this very moment. But I think for a very compact and portable solution, it does the job right in 4K. You know what? I just finished this vlogging demo where I wanted to show you how the microphone sounds and it fell apart in my hands. Look at that. Seems to be broken. And I, I try to put it back, doesn't seem to work. So very unfortunately, it looks like that also the accessories are not of great quality. The camera is fine though. You know, it just, just, I was lucky enough to figure this out before it fell down, but 
be careful because it could be that you know, yours gets broken as well. Due to the size and the form factor, we count on non-replaceable battery and lack of display, which are two key features for each and every action cam. The main problem, as I see it, is that you have no reliable information about the discharge status of the battery, and that makes planning of shooting vlogs particularly difficult. I'm not going to bore you with the exact button operations, because you will anyways forget them two minutes after you watch the video, so let me say that you can power it on, you can enable the Wi-Fi, you can start shooting at the mode that is configured from the app, and you can switch on or off the lights, everything else is to be done from inside the app. Not that it's too complicated to switch between resolutions and select the mode, but every time you want to record slow motion, for instance, which at its best scenario here is Full HD at 60fps, you power on the camera, you press the Wi-Fi key combination, you connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, you open the app, you change the thing, and then you can record. It will piss you off if the camera is set to photo mode and you want to record a video, because you have to go through the very same procedure before you can shoot. And often this will mean that you're going to miss the scene. Here are some more samples to look at. Is the video quality good? Well, I think it's acceptable in daylight and rather poor in low light. Stabilization is pretty weak, most of the time it feels as if there is no stabilization. I've tried to keep my hands very steady. Colors seem to be alright, so is the white balance. At some points video look even cartoonish, as if they are shot with a cheap action camera, but this one is not even cheap, that's my higher expectations. <coughs> On the other hand, impressive job with eliminating distortions, you can observe the edges of the screen and there's no sign of the typical distortions for wide-angle devices. But if there is one word I could use to describe my experience with it, limited. It can totally be useful in some scenarios, like wearing on a helmet or a chest, or with a head strap, but each one of these scenarios is possible with a normal action camera with the right accessory and is gonna offer way better quality. On top of that, using the magnet mount, things won't work just with any sort of fabric, it has to be something light, like a t-shirt. If we talk about hoodies, I wouldn't risk it. For the first time in many episodes, I'm not gonna run a list with the disadvantages because I feel I've highlighted enough. The Castle Keychain 4K vlogging camera is not as functional as Action Camera because it has no display, and for that reason alone I can totally exclude it from my shortlist with preferred vlogging cameras. It has non-replaceable battery, very limited shooting options without the app, lack of easy-to-use accessories, mediocre performance and questionable video quality. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. If you want to learn some more about the Akaso keychain, follow the link from the video description and you can get your camera at a discounted price. If you want to see some proper 4K action and vlogging cameras, there are plenty on the channel and I'll link some reviews as well. Don't forget to support me and the channel in any form you can and wish. If you need some ideas, like or dislike, subscribe, comment, share or just smile and enjoy your day. At the end, I want to be very clear, everything that I say in this video is based on my own experience and adjusted to the current price of the camera. If Acaso decide to lower the price, I think we can live with a big portion of these drawbacks, but for 109 or even the planned 169 retail price, I'm really wondering who the hell is gonna use that? <laughs>